This is question 16. In this question, a substance has magnetic permeability equal to 22 into 10 raise to power minus 4 tesla meter per ampere. The value of magnetic susceptibility is and the four options are 1750, 1751, 1752, 1749. Now, this one as per the definition, the permeability is equal to mu naught into mu r. Now, mu naught can be written as 4 pi into 10 raise to power minus 7 multiplied by mu r, wherein the mu has a value as per the given question to be equal to 22 into 10 raise to power minus 4. We can solve this expression further and write down that mu r will be equal to 7 by 4 into 10 raise to power 3. Now, dear students, we must also know that mu r is equal to 1 plus xi, where xi is the magnetic susceptibility. So, xi will be equal to mu r minus 1, that is 7 by 4 into 10 raise to power 3 minus 1, giving us a value of 1749. And hence for this question, the correct answer is option number D. Now, moving on to the next question. This is question number 17. Question 17 says, a spherical body of radius 20 centimeter contains a charge 4 into 10 raise to power minus 8 coulomb, distributed uniformly in its volume. The magnitude of electric field at a distance 10 centimeter from its center will be closest to. And the four options are 4500 Newton per coulomb, 3100 Newton per coulomb, 6800 Newton per coulomb or 1000 Newton per coulomb. Dear students, the electric field inside a spherical body with uniform charge distribution is given as rho by 3 epsilon naught into x, where rho is the volumetric charge density, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and x is the distance from the center of the point wherein the electric field is to be calculated. We can substitute the required values. So, rho will have a value of 4 into 10 raise to power minus 8 divided by 4 by 3 pi 0 0.2 cube that is charge by volume that is rho multiplied by x and herein x is 0 0.1 meter that is 10 centimeter divided by 3 into and epsilon naught has a value of 8.85 into 10 raise to power minus 12. On solving this further, we get a value approximately 4496 Newton per coulomb, which can be approximately written as 4500 Newton per coulomb. And as per the given options, the correct answer is option number A. Now, let us proceed to the next question, that is question number 18. The question says, the power factor of the following circuit is, the circuit diagram is given to us and there is an AC source. It is given that the capacitive reactance is 2 ohms, the inductive reactance is 4 ohms and the resistance is 2 ohms. The four options are 1 by root 2, pi by 4, 1 and root 2. Dear students, the power factor that is cos phi can be written as R by Z, where Z is the impedance of the circuit. So, this can be written as R divided by under root of XL minus XC whole square plus R square. Now, R has a value of 2 divided by root XC and XL have a value of 2 and 4 respectively. So, this will be 4 minus 2 square plus 2 square. Now, this will give us a value of 1 by root 2 and therefore, the power factor is 1 by root 2. For the given questions, therefore, the correct answer is option number A. Now, let us proceed to the next question. This is question number 19. The question says a liquid in a capillary rises up to a height h when the capillary is vertical. If the capillary is inclined at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical, then the length of the liquid in the capillary will be. The four options are h, 2h, root 2h or h by root 2. Now, let us proceed to the solution. Dear students, it is given that in the vertical capillary, the rise is to a height of h. One thing to note here is that even if we tilt the capillary, the vertical ascent of the liquid will remain same that is equal to h. Now, in the second case, the capillary is given to be inclined at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical. 
Now, if the length of the water column is L, we must note that the vertical ascent will remain H only and therefore, L cos 45 will be equal to H or we can write down that L will be equal to root 2 H and hence for this question the correct answer clearly is option number C. Now, let us proceed to the next question. This is question 20. In this question in YDSC, if the separation between the slits is tripled and the distance between the screen and the slit plane is also tripled, then the fringe width for options are becomes half, becomes unchanged, becomes one third or gets tripled. Dear students, the fringe width which is written as beta is written as lambda capital D by small d, where lambda is the wavelength of the light used, capital D is the distance between the slit plane and the screen and small d is the distance between the two slits. Herein it is given that the distance between the slits is tripled and the distance between the screen and the slit plane is also tripled, which means that d dash that is the new capital D dash will be equal to 3 d and d dash will be equal to 3 small d. So, the new fringe width beta dash can be written as lambda d dash by small d dash and this will be equal to lambda 3 capital D divided by 3 small d giving us a value of lambda capital D by small d that is equal to the initial value of fringe width only. Therefore, the fringe width remains unchanged and for the given question the correct answer is option number B. Now, let us move to the next question. 